So they are able to produce what their requirement is and then they are, they are able to exchange that. But one key thing I want to share is this. Is one problem that we have is so many people who don't have jobs and people who are poor people. So before they went in for this, about 50 percent of the people were like this, have nots. And <coughs> through this process <coughs> of collaboration, <coughs> of exchange, they have been able to uh, convert it from this 50 percent have nots to people who are all employed, who are participating. There is a myth that uh, this if you don't produce cars, then what will happen? Or if you don't produce the nuclear weapons, all the people who are employed in that, what will happen? That's a question. All of them will get properly employed. And this is a, quite a good example of that. 100% employment is there. Nobody is free. And how much do you have to work every day? You, know? you have to have time for this part, this relationship part. We have become so busy, <coughs> you know, software industry where I used to work, we are busy for about 12 to 14 hours every day. Then what, you know, then lot of problem in the relationship. So you can see that <coughs> the time that is available, how do we Ensure what we need, recognize our need, fulfill that need, and spend the rest of the time in relationship. What we are doing, we are spending time in TV, <laughs> newspaper, you know, meeting, etc. All the things. Other you know. things. We can have like this for everybody. <coughs> There is a video called Economics of Happiness. In that, this lady who made this video, about 20 years back, she went to Latar and she asked, you know, one young man, can you show me the poorest house in this village? So this man was very confused. He said, what is that? No, we don't have any poor people. And 20 years later, the same young man was seen going after the tourist and saying that, please, you know, give me some money, they are so poor. Same person. <coughs> what has changed? So when we can have, you know, 100% people participating, even small children, big children, Old people, everybody can be participating. Like this part, this part, this right understanding and right feeling, this can probably best be done by the people who are, you know, older in age. This part of production and work can probably be done better by the people who are young, young people. Very simple. What we are doing, at least I can see in India, is increase in the old people's homes because they were busy with this physical facility. <coughs> now that they have stopped working and providing the physical facility at home, and the people at home also are only worried about that. <coughs> so then the old people are saying, now I'm useless. What to do? So a lot of old people who come to the workshop also, they say that <coughs> my desire is to keep working till the last day. Working and doing what? Only this part. Because that's the only place that they are finding that they can be busy. But it doesn't have to be like that. If they develop the right understanding and right feeling, they can take this responsibility and do it much better. When we see in our own the leaving children in the crash in the you know play school, all that. Very painful for the mothers to leave the children and go to work. 
for what for this? Okay. Uh, this one keeps on getting less. They don't get it. So we can understand where we want to get to. We can make effort for that rather than only focus on that particular person. You can see, is it that you want to focus on? So more and more of this, is it going to result in what you want? So what we can look into is a human society where every individual is working on all three with the right priority. And therefore, participating in a society with these goals. And every action, whether it is individual action, or whether it is an action in a family, or whether it is an action in an organization, a larger organization or smaller organization, they can ask this question, is it you know, doing any of this, is it doing any of this, and so on. They can keep asking this question. And <coughs> you can see, I just want to sort of show you this one. <coughs> How do we ask those questions and find answers to those questions? So for example, I can find out what percentage of the population in my family of 4 people or 10 people has this right understanding. And how do I find out actually? We can be more precise. That if my, I am living with more than 50% reaction, that means I still need to work on myself. So maybe I will count it at 50% or 60% or something. And find out that. So I have right understanding. At least that indicator I can have. So we actually developed a survey for the villages where, you know, with all these measures, not all but many of these measures. <coughs> For each goal, we can develop certain set of measures, which are observable measures from outside. And then try to find out what the status is, with a view for mutual fulfillment. Not with a view for saying, you know, you are rank 4 and rank 3 and whatever. <laughs> so with a view, where do we need to concentrate, where do we need to work, and what do we need to do. So on that, so we can have you know, very observables you know, and uh, concrete measures for each of the goals and work towards those. So we have you know, specificity about uh, where we are. We can find out exactly where we are. But reasonable preciseness. So somebody was asking this question, you know, like this uh, question that <coughs> if I am here okay, and I don't know my goal, right, then I am doing something about it. I have some vague idea about the goal. So I go here, then somebody says, no, no, it is over here. And you say, no, no, it is over here. But I don't know whether I am making progress or I am not making progress. So if I have clarity on my goal, that this is my goal, okay. and I have all this ability to measure my state of being, where I am, so then I can chalk out a path, you know, maybe it is not a straight path, but some path like that. But right now I don't know whether it is going in the right direction or the wrong direction. In fact, if you see at a global level, we are going in this direction. Terrorism and war. <laughs> what do you think? You know? That is one thing. The clarity of goal is very important. And the second thing is the right evaluation of my state of being. Right? If I am over evaluating myself, What do you think? If I over-evaluate myself, this goal will look very close to myself. 
Oh, I'm already there. No, those guys are the bad guys. Let's fix those guys. So I have to have right evaluation of myself. So I have to have right evaluation of myself as an individual, as a family. For example, as a family, you can find out how many moments are there every day where I am happy with my spouse, with my children and how many moments are there where I am not. And out of that, what is my role to fix it, to deal with it? Versus saying, you know, I am fine, those guys are the bad guys. My wife is, you know, very, she keeps saying these things. So instead of having that, what we discussed yesterday, having, you know, complaints and having regrets, so having responsibility <coughs> in relationship. We can find out where we are, where we want to get to, and we'll make our plan accordingly. So, the problem is not that there are bad guys out there who are very active. The problem is that the good guys have to become active. Otherwise, are they really good guys or they are inactive? You know, some inactive guys. So, that's what we have been trying to do all along. We are trying to understand our natural acceptance and live according to our natural acceptance that is living in harmony. And then participate in this larger order. This is what we are talking about now. Is Five dimensions of the So, just a few minutes. Sir, if you could go to the previous slide, sir. The problem I have. A lot of people will say that you know, in different ways. Yeah. Essentially, the takeaway from that is, you know, let the good guys also become active. <laughs> See, we keep on complaining, you know, government is not doing this and government is not doing that or the court is not doing this, or this education system is not doing that. See, this campus is so dirty. What am I doing? I am the guy who is creating that thing. I have to be active. When this course is running, we went to this particular sub. So the students, the, the director is one ex Air Force officer, helicopter pilot very strict, all that, you know. And he has, I met him two times, you know, one, one and a half years back and one this last month. Very significant change in him, although he has not been through the workshop. But there is so much of activity going on in his college that now he is totally like, okay, you know, these guys are talking some sense. So he is helping enable that to happen. So he was saying that, you know, our campus has become so much cleaner and the boys who are doing this course, they have asked me for garbage cans and they have put it where they want to put it. And now I don't see, you know, so much garbage in the campus. So they have themselves taken that responsibility. And he was saying another thing that in my, he is very happy, you know, that this year when the children came to our college, we had 800 students, 400 were in batch 1 and 400 in batch 2, so they have to, you know, do some subjects, top five, um, five subjects in first semester and then 
subject 6 to 10 in the second semester and that we had split. So the group that had human values and professional ethics in their course, their uh, children with good attendance, that is 80% or better attendance, was 63%. And the children in the other group had 30%. So there was so much difference. And then I asked, you know, what happened in the second semester when this got flipped? So he said that the group A, which had human value in the first semester, their attendance stayed about the same. And the group that had poor attendance, they went from 30% to 60%. They didn't go to 63%, but 60%. So they had, both the groups have, you know. So I said that attendance is not the big deal. We have put so many rules, I will, you know, not give you such numbers, I will do this and that, you know. That's not the big deal. The big deal is that the student is taking that responsibility and feeling that responsibility and fulfilling that responsibility. That is the big deal. And they are able to see it for themselves. It's not because of your rules. You had these rules before also. So this you know, can be active. <coughs> if we are active, then you know, these things happen or they can take place with our participation. So in fact, if you see human value, what does it mean? Essentially it means my participation in this larger order. Am I clear about my role in existence? So my role in existence is my value. As a human being, it is human value. That's all that it means. And we are only exploring small, small pieces, each piece, one piece at a time. Yeah. So a few more minutes if you have any comments or questions. Yes. I mean, how <coughs> You are in India. Uh, there are seven lakh villages also in India. And uh, we don't have a good count of it, but around where we are in Kanpur, so there are about 500 villages. And out of those 500 <coughs> villages, you would say only two villages might be okay. All the rest of them are in. But you can observe that. What is going out of the village and what is coming back into the village? You can also observe, you know, what is the age group of the people in the village? You can observe these things. I mean, you, if you go through it, you can observe. What I try to observe is, you know, the cow dung heaps in the village. Yeah, if I am responsible, I won't leave it like that. You know, it's such good such fertilizer. I would use it. And I also observe, you know, whether the houses are in, uh, you know, eco-friendly or they are not. Is there a lot of disparity or it is, you know, like, uh, so like, so one interesting example in, uh, in a village in Punjab, one of the people who had come for this workshop, Arman, Arman Ji, his father is the Sardhan of that village. So they have taken the so that village has about 300 or so acres of land. Out of that, the village, uh, the child, they have a child land of almost 40 or 50 acres. So they have taken 25 acres of that and put forest in that. Just uh, three, four months back. With the forest department, they fenced it, they put a tube well, and we saw the latest one that is eight acres Inside. They put forest in that and they want to make sure that they uh, leave it as forest. Any village very close to our country, if Dr. Jimmy and I want to visit. Yeah, what we would suggest actually is to visit what uh, Vinish Ji will share tomorrow, day after tomorrow. A village uh, in, uh, again in Maharashtra. A lot of work is happening in Maharashtra. Uh, but you see, there is a direct from here, there is a direct train from. Uh, uh, this uh, Adniwali Kutwar towards Hyderabad and this is on the way. 
<coughs> so it will take you from New Ali Pudwar, it will take you about maybe 18 hours or so. It's not very far. But there you will be able to see you know, um, I spent two years in Amravati. Amravati. Yeah, it's very close to Amravati. This place is called, uh, uh, what is the name? Vijayanash? No, not Vijayanash. It is the Subhash Sarmaji Shampa. One of our colleagues, Subhash Sarmaji, finished it to share this, this experiment. He started with 10 hectares, 12 hectares of land. And now naturally it has become 25 hectares. He was naturally in the sense that, you know, the people around this said, yeah, you know, such good stuff is happening, so we will also join him. So they are working together as a family. So they are, I mean, and the ownership of the land is not the big detail. The sense of relationship and responsibility is the big deal. And then to see, Know, what my participation in the rest of nature is. And this hours and sheet process that was actually we have not talked about it. Cyclic and mutually enriching process. That is visible. You know, that with all the things that are around, we can live in a very mutually fulfilling manner. So that's what they are doing over there. So Mahasharmani's farm is worth visiting. And one of his colleagues runs this workshop on
I just uh, shared one good small uh, you know, experience after this Muthi uh, Kranji. Uh, being a business school, we really thought a lot how to earn our own rupee. How to earn our own rupee. Uh, you know, the Gelu is uh, really has very unpredictable weather. Fog and uh, the quality of the soil is also not that productive. So, uh, I started cultivating my kitchen garden. And uh, <coughs> Like that time, initially we, this was the second year, you know, and last year I produced 52 kg potato in my kitchen garden. Now what I have in my kitchen garden, I stay just 5 minutes away from this hall. You all can come and see, it's D5, growing almost all different kinds of vegetables. Okay? <laughs> now I got that idea, like uh, what the sir said, Cows and collecting manure. So I also found that many cows are coming and uh, you know, roaming around my quarters and living those cows. <laughs> so I, I collected that manure. Just behind my house, I dig a hole where I am putting my all waste, food waste, along with the cows and it's making a manure. But thanks to those, uh, you know, cows. Otherwise, before that, like my friend Pakraji's photo I can show you, is holding a sack of manure, cow dung on his head. <laughs> so this is how we used to go to the jungle and collect the, you know, the gober in the initial stage. This is just to increase the quality of the soil. But now, we don't have to go to the jungle. The cows are coming to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so even if, it, if you drop down to my water, I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, you know, give you at least a cup of tea. <laughs> so you, are, you and your students have lots of, uh, you can take your mobile and make these small small clips about what is happening and put it together and share it with people. It's very enriching. Now they are demanding, sir, put the folder in the Facebook, they are demanding. See, Facebook is one place. And put it somewhere where so you can multiply the idea. Many times Facebook is used for show of I don't know. <laughs> I, I will agree with you, sir. Because you see the comments, you know, what comments, nice picture, you know, smiley face. Like it. Like it, five likes, you know, fifty likes. And that's it. Then what happened? <laughs> So, like, I'll give you an example. In uh, Ali, Aligarh, there is a college called uh, Al Barkat College of. Uh, it's a business college. So, the students of that college they make small small clippings as an assignment. So, you can take, you can make for this. So many possibilities are there. Really study what is real. And the work on that. So it was thank you. Yeah. Can you pass the mic? I want to take our college to Masangas. <laughs> we have also a small group having about 11 different activities. And I don't want to take your time. If you are interested, we can discuss during the uh, break what we are doing and whether it is in line with this harmony in society. You can cross check with me. <laughs> and if you want to communicate, my email number is given. If it works in the village, it's fine. I will respond to you. <laughs> What I interested by the previous uh, one was on the exchange of grain from one village to another using less money. I think that will be nice uh, if you have some literature or some guidance how they do. 